So we are going to have a brief introduction about um, uh, India. So India is one of the countries that uh, has the world's second most population country. And as you may know, uh, it has um, different kind of languages, different kind of cultures. And uh, some people also call it um, um, unit in diversity. It's called a phrase for uh, saying the India. And um, so um, society is very wide and there are lots of, lot, a lot number of kind of people that are living there together to uh, together in each, with each other. And uh, so India got independent in 1947. And before that, it was um, ruled by the British Empire. And um, with the help of Gandhi and uh, Nehru, it got independent in 1947 and uh, started to having some kind of um, diff challenges in that moment. And then um, until 1990s, until the, exactly 1992 with the uh, economical reforms, um, it used to have a, a kind of agricultural uh, or rural system of um, uh, civilization. And um, the GDP number was not that much high. And in 1992, with the economic reforms uh, happened in India, it started to becoming an emerging power inside its region in Asia, and then it's after that, gradually, it um, aimed to um, be a global actor. And uh, so right now, GDP of India is, is number fifth in the world. And um, uh, the, about, around, about the Israel and Arabs, uh, after, after the separation of, after the independence of India in 1947, um, India started to have some problems with the Muslim communication. They wanted to, they, they had, some kind of problems with the Hindus and um, a lot number of conflict where they're um, happening, a lot number of people killed because of these challenges and conflicts. And uh, then um, they, uh, although that they separated the uh, west part called the um, Pakistan and the east part called the, then after that the Bangladesh, but still inside the India because there are, uh, as I remember, around 250 million Muslims and um, this is also still uh, a conflict between that. After that, after the independence, they had problem over Kashmir conflict, or in the K Kashmir area, uh, in the north, in the western, uh, northwest part of the India, in the border with the Pakistan, there was some conflict there. There were some wars uh, there, um, and uh, they have conflicts. Uh, but uh, in order to um, go deeper into the discussion of what I wanted to um, mention and the relationship between this uh, situation on the uh, foreign policy of India toward the uh, Mediterranean region countries, we need to go to uh, see the um, what we say the uh, situation of uh, between these two countries. So, Indo-Israeli relations, um, as as I mentioned, India got in independent. Uh, in 1947 and Israel independent in 1948. And, but they, they uh, didn't have um, formal um, bilateral relations with each other because in that times, um, uh, inside India, they, they were called uh, foreign policy, the Nehruvian ideology. The Nehruvian ideology said that uh, we have to support Palestine and Palestine is a place for Arabs and um, um, not Jews cannot come to the Arab groups, as as the um, as I remember the Gandhi said that as as it's like the same uh, that uh, as English is for uh, as England is for English and uh, France is for French, so the Palestine should be also for Arabs, and they have conflicts like this inside the. Um, India and in, in, yeah, Indian society. And then after that, some kind of, um, the, the Muslim population were also, um, were, were, were have some sympathy with the Palestinians. And therefore the foreign policy of uh, India in that time was um, not to have a formal bilateral relations with Israel. But uh, although that uh, by the Nehru, uh, the, prime, the first prime minister of India, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, 
he um, established a uh, recognized in Israel, and but um, they didn't have formal uh, bilateral relations. It took four decades for India to uh, normalize its relation with Israel. And um, during that time, it was buying its arm and facilities from Russia, from the Soviet Union in that time, and was uh, one of the most um, important allies to India before 1990s. And um, uh, India also was um, having some uh, conflicts over Kashmir and the Arab world countries, and even the Arab world uh, countries uh, in the North Africa, in the Mediterranean region, uh, they also used to, because they were part of the non-alignment movement, and they all uh, agreed to um, support Palestine. And But the Arab world supported Pakistan over the Kashmir conflicts. And that was one of the India's concerns over that time. But in, uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union and after the uh, termination of the Cold War, the thing that happened over the foreign policy of um, India was that, okay, India saw that um, there's no Soviet Union and um, his best uh, military um, supplier was not over, but was not uh, be there. It wasn't it wasn't there, and so it has started to change its uh, foreign policy uh, from that ideological point through a realistic point of view. Uh, they started to uh, see the world as a more realistic or some, some kind of um, uh, scientists call it hyperreal period of the Indian foreign policy. And uh, so they started to change or reform their foreign policy, and they started to see the countries that they didn't have uh, attention to have um, relations with them, such as Israel and also the United States. Uh, so they started to uh, normalize their situation, their um, bilateral relations, because uh, Israel wanted to have a country with high-tech military weapons in order to fill the gap of the Soviet Union. And so right now, Russia uh, and the uh, United States, uh, England and Israel also are uh, the top um, military suppliers for India. And uh, also, um, as I remember, the, um, over the Kashmir conflict, um, Israel sent some um, mortars to India for, to have this military help over India. And then after that, in um, I think in 1962 and 1965, over the if I if I'm sure about the date, um, about this, um, he Israel military uh, helped uh, India over the uh, wars with um, China. So um, India has a geopolitical position, which has India Ocean, and uh, is a good good place for Israel to invest on because it can have uh, its um, has a better position in, in its region in the West Asia for, for Israel, I mean. And um, there, and for India also, it's, it's a good option to have Israel on its side for uh, having some votes in the UN and uh, have the military support and stuff like this. So uh, if it goes on, I want to uh, give you some data about uh, India GDP. It, as we can see in this chart, in this table, from 2004 to 2014, which is Manmohan Singh premiership in the Indian uh, government, uh, we can see the uh, growth of the GDP. And from 2014 to 2021, uh, we can see that it is rising in a better um, slate. So uh, the thing that I want to mention here is that Narendra Modi, in comparison with his predecessor, which was Manmohan Singh, uh, they had different approaches toward um, uh, their foreign policy. The, man, the Narendra Modi, uh, as an agent, in the, as, as we are going to um, uh, see it in uh, the point of view of the Anthony Giddens with the structuration theory, the structure and agent and the dialectic uh, role between these two. As the agent, Narendra Modi um, uh, had a better um, uh, plans for its foreign policy because he, he um, put foreign policy as one of his first agendas. And um, he was as a, as a more um, powerful agent in the foreign policy of India. 
And uh, so when Narendra Modi came to work, they started to uh, see uh, its neighbors um, have make or strengthen the relationship between their um, Indian neighbors in its region, and then uh, started to look um, over its region or to the other regions, such as the uh, Mediterranean region, as we're going to um, talk more about it. And um, okay, so uh, this is another um, another uh, table to see the comparison between the Manmohan Singh and Narendra Modi uh, GDP and uh, their foreign policy toward the different um, countries here. And so India's real bilateral economic relations was um, formed in um, 1992. And it, as the number says that it was $200 million in 1992, which is uh, becoming to $200 billion in 2022, as estimated by the Indian government. And um, right now, India is Israel's third largest trade partner in Asia. They are working on um, different kind of um, parts. The first and most important for India is the um, is the defense sector because of the situation of India. They 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 want to have some high tech um, facilities. They buy some kind of uh, a lot number of military things. They um, implemented some uh, military factories inside India, and India right now can um, make or um, facilitate a lot number of. Uh, its own military facilities or military weapons, and after that for the other countries. Uh, let me uh, I just remember another fact, it's better to mention it here, is that um, India also, uh, as Pakistan, Pakistan has the nuclear weapon and the China has it, uh, it's also um, uh, critical for India to have a better uh, position in its uh, region between these two countries. And uh, this is also another fact that India started to opening its gates uh, toward Israel and um, facilitating its relations with Israel. Uh, another thing that was important between these two countries was the two, 20, um, 2017 visit of um, Narendra Modi as the Prime Minister of India to Israel as to be the first Indian Prime Minister in the whole history of India to visit Israel. And uh, it was one of the uh, some scientists believe that it's the turning point over the relationship between these two countries, because after that, um, also uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of the Israel, came to have a visit to um, India, and they started to having some um, more uh, reliable and more um, um, number of agreements also signed between these two countries. And um, yes, uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, okay, um, as I mentioned, after the collapse of the Soviet Union uh, over the Kashmir conflict, Israel helped India, although that India didn't show much interest to have relations with Israel, but it didn't stop Israel from um, not investing on India as a um, power in, inside Asia. And uh, the Pakistan threat also, uh, as uh, is still is, uh, is still in presence, um, is critical for um, India to strengthen its relations with the Israel. So, um, if I want to go to uh, much more details for their uh, situation between the countries, so. The thing that happens was that um, India and Israel started to develop their own relationships, their um, bilateral relations. And um, India improved in, so as we know, India is very, very um, high tech in computer sciences and IT. And um, although that South Korea is also in, in this category, but um, India is also important in this field. And Israel uh, wanted to um, uh, invest in Silicon Valley in uh, Bangalore, and they have uh, a lot number of cooperation uh, between um, the different kind of sectors, such as, um, as you may know, India is, uh, has a lot number of precious metals, gold and uh, other mineral uh, elements 
that are uh, really um, interesting for Israel to import them from India. And uh, Israel also has some high-tech military and uh, agricultural high-tech facilities, uh, facilities in water, um, water problem that I mentioned in, our, in my predecessor's um, um, presentation about the water crisis. And India also had, still has this um, problem with the pure water or healthy water. A lot number of people inside India, they did not access, they don't have access to the um, healthy water actually. And uh, so this, these were the parts that India and Israel started to um, work on that and now are to, um, they have amicable ties to with each other. And so what are the impacts during the time of Narendra Modi on the Mediterranean region Arab countries? Uh, when in 2020, Israel started um, some countries in the Arab world, such as uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, Bahrain started to uh, recognize Israel, a, a kind of shift happened in the, um, uh, in the field of um, um, this uh, political system inside this region or Asia happened for these two countries. And uh, so when Israel became friends um, with um, Bahrain and uh, the Saudi Arabia, they got a better relations. Um, the India started to have some more uh, cooperations with these countries. And India and Morocco um, also has a vast number of cooperations. Uh, actually, um, I don't have access to my data right now to uh, give you the details, but you can see it further in my um, paper, uh, which is released here in Afromedic Conference. And um, uh, the things that are very important was that um, the Moroccan king, King Muhammad, uh, came to uh, visit Israel and they started to um, uh, have a high number of cooperations with uh, each other. And uh, also I mentioned that Morocco was one of the countries that was um, uh, agreeing with the non-alignment movement and was supporting it. Also Algeria and uh, countries in that region. And India and Algeria also as well had uh, used to strengthen their relationships after the Modi um, pre premiership in India. And Tunisia also as one of the countries that very, they, they have a lot number of um, um, cooperations with uh, India. One of the main companies in India, which is called Tata, Tata Company, uh, which you may heard about this, uh, the, the number of cars inside the India, with, which are produced by the Tata. Tata is, all, is a very bigger, uh, company is not just limited to their automobile industry. Um, we can we can come in the way that uh, Samsung is in South Korea, which is uh, not just limited to the cell phones and home appliances, uh, and it has a vast uh, industry in shipping and uh, other related industries. Uh, Tata is a company like this. Tata was uh, one of the main investors that worked with uh, Tunisia and Algeria. And the details are uh, also mentioned. And Egypt, Jordan, and the, the, there come some kind of um, Eastern um, countries there, such as the GCC countries, the Gulf countries. They're also very important for India because India uh, still needs its uh, resource for um, the energy sector. Uh, India wants to have its um, energy sector and um, as to importing oil from that countries, GCC countries are very important for uh, the India. Uh, another important thing that happened after the uh, changing of the uh, India's foreign policy uh, approach toward the uh, countries of the Arab world and the uh, Arab world Mediterranean region countries uh, in, uh, is very crucial here is the India Arab Mediterranean Commercial Corridor. And this corridor, as we can see in the picture, is um, one of the ways that uh, can help India to, um, to transport its goods uh, and um, bring them to the Europe over this Mediterranean region. And uh, another factor that uh, made India to work on this corridor was the uh, Iran situation. As uh, Modi visited Iran in, um, if I'm not 
a mistake uh, in 2016. Um, uh, in, uh, Narendra Modi made a visit to Ayatollah Khamenei, the Supreme Leader of Iran, and uh, uh, Dr. Hassan Rouhani, the president of that time. And uh, they, they uh, started to have cooperations over Chabahar port. Chabahar port is one of the ports uh, in the uh, east, um, uh, south part of Iran. There's a port there. If I can uh, show you on the map, there will be around these parts, the Chabahar port uh, in the Iran. And the, India wanted to go to uh, transport its goods over the Chaba airport to Iran and then to Turkey and then to the Europe. So it was a new way for uh, India to um, transport its goods. But uh, the thing that happened was that after the um, President Donald Trump, the President of the United States, started to put some um, heavy sanctions over Iran, um, it's limited India to um, continue its 500 um, um, million dollars investment over the Chabahar port. And um, therefore, um, India started to uh, look for a new way to um, have a better uh, um, a corridor for transporting its um, goods and also importing goods that is critical for India. So this corridor can um, help India for uh, to, as you can see, uh, it starts to um, transport its um, goods from the Mumbai port toward the Dubai and uh, Jebel Ali, and then uh, from the Dubai to um, uh, to the um, Saudi Arabia parts over there. And th they also said that they're going to um, put some railways over that uh, desert parts in the Saudi Arabia between uh, that road. And then after that, they will go to um, uh, arrive at Haifa in Israel. And then after that, by ship, um, they go to Piraeus in the Greece, uh, which is uh, which will be from this Mediterranean part. And this um, corridor is really crucial for actually it's not uh, completed yet. But if it if it's um, complete, if it will be completed. Uh, in the near future, um, it will be a uh, it will open a new age for the related countries over that um, the GCC countries there, India, and with the Mediterranean uh, countries, they will have a um, new kind of um, as mentioned a new age for um, having some commercial uh, positions and commercial effects over these countries and. So uh, as to conclude, um, actually some kind of my details were uh, in my drafts and uh, you will definitely um, see them after the, um, my presentation in the paper. You can see the details that will emphasize on more relations with these countries. And in this map also we can see the um, position of India in the um, West, uh, in the Asia and the relationship with it. Uh, to the West Asian countries and the Mediterranean region. So that, that field, that uh, part is going to be very crucial for India. And uh, we hope to, um, the new, to, by the completion of this new corridor, can, be, can have um, strengthen the relationship between India and the countries over the uh, Mediterranean region and not just the Arabs, but also the other countries. So thank you for um, thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Actually, some kind of my some of my details are uh, missed, but you can see them in the uh, presentation paper. And if there is any questions left, I am here to answer the questions.